Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Cassidy Diamond. Uh, as you probably know by now, I am the Associate Director of Public Programs and Events here at the IDA. Um, before we begin, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. Um, coming to you today from Chicago, which is on the unceded land of the Potawatomi people, who have been stewards of this land for generations. I'd also like to thank our media sponsor, IndieWire, for bringing this series to you all. You can check out all of our upcoming screenings. We have about three or four weeks left, if I'm doing my math correct. Um, you can visit www.documentary.org slash screening dash series. And you can see all of the great films coming up. Um, and without any further ado, let's get this conversation started with the filmmaking team of Paper and Glue, moderated by Crooked Media's Shaniqua McClendon. Welcome, Shaniqua. Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm really excited to have this conversation uh, with the creators um, of this amazing film, Paper and Glue. Um, <clears throat> just gonna jump right into the conversation and kind of direct questions at each of you as we go along. Uh, JR, the first question is for you. Um, you started documenting your art and your life pretty early on. When did you decide to actually make a documentary? Did you always have intentions to do that? Um, and then Mark Dallas and Keiko, I would love to know how each of you approach your role uh, in the film and helping telling JR's story. Thank you so much. Um, look, I mean, it's true that um, uh, over the years, sometimes I don't know why I was documenting so much, maybe because, you know, uh, doing art in the street is pretty ephemeral, so that was to keep a trace of it. Uh, but I have to say that over the years, I've made shorts, or I've made documentaries for the exhibitions, or two documentaries where you would see, um, you know, the people, more of the people that I've been interviewing uh, around the project. But it's the first time that we kind of compile a documentary that shows the process of making, uh, uh, you know, the art and, and the projects within the communities. That's really what's never been shown before. And, uh, and so a lot of those archives have helped uh, uh, in a big way because, you know, they were never used before. Mark? Yeah, I mean, as a JR studio director for the past 10 years, uh, I was also very close to all of the project and, and working on this documentary allowed us to revisit all the archives of all the project and, and Keiko and Dallas were instrumental in helping us getting some distance and, and, and uh, look at the project with a, a pair of fresh eyes. Yeah, awesome. Dallas? Yeah, so um, I've been working in documentary for 20 years and have known about JR, but I was I was relatively amazed and excited to discover so many of these pieces of the story that I'd never heard before or seen before. And uh, for us, it was an opportunity to go deep sea diving in, in this incredible treasure trove of archive. And and it was a very collaborative effort. We we're a small team, but we all kind of played every role possible. So some of it was just about putting pieces together. There were a lot of gems, but then it was sort of finding, finding the narrative in all the little moments that were amazing. But Keiko can take it from here because she was really the, the brains in the edit putting all of these pieces together. Well, it actually came, I don't want to minimize our efforts here, but it came together pretty easily in a way because I think initially the JR wanted to tell, you know, focus on certain project and he has told these stories before. So he tells very good, you know, he's a great storyteller. So, <laughs> and, and we had amazing footage. So what can I ask for as an editor? Already a great story and a great footage. So, you know, it couldn't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, well, you all did an amazing job. Just. I mean, it just struck me so immediately to see the conversation uh, with um, the inmates, but then to see the US-Mexico border story just 
interspersed with actual footage. It just made for a really great experience in taking that in. Um, JR, my next question um, is specifically for you. A lot of your work centers around people and places that are often portrayed as dangerous and frightening um, and kind of not worth being seen. But when they do receive attention, it's often negative attention. And I just, I, this may sound like a really big question, but how, how are you able to bring light to those spaces? And I think what I mean is that like, you know that your art uh, can do that, but it, you can tell in the film that people feel things. You know, one of the women in Brazil says, someone noticed us, which it's a very small statement, but it just struck me because clearly they haven't felt noticed for so long. So, you know, how did you do that? And what is it like knowing you have that impact on people with your art? Um, look, I realized early that the, the, the impact of art by in, implicating the community was very powerful. And, and the truth is that, that light exists. It's just that no one is, is uh, shining uh, 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 as much uh, uh, energy on finding this light than, than on finding the negatives in a lot of those places. So to be honest, it's not like we did a casting of finding the most interesting stories. We basically, you, you tap on the shoulder of any person there and they have an incredible story, but it's about to stop and do it in a period where it's not because of this or that incident. It's not because of that violence. It's just because of who they are and what they stand for. And so in all those communities, that's how we've always approached every project. And, um, and I have to say, I, you know, in each place, we don't necessarily... Um, only like go for, hey, we're going to do this only if there's an impact. Most of the time, we don't know. There's more risk for failure than success. That's the strength of actually trying to push the boundaries. And that's when I know it's interesting to work in a place when you actually don't know if the project's going to actually happen. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, if any of you, anyone else wants to jump in, feel free. Otherwise, I will go to my next question. That's for everyone. Um, okay. Um, so my next question kind of builds on my last question, but specifically thinking about in the film, um, JR, when you're speaking to the students and you talk about the fact that a journalist asks you to take photos of the young people during the riots, like, you know, vandalizing cars and things like that, which obviously would have portrayed them in, in a negative light. Um, but I'd love to start actually with Mark and Dallas on this question. What under, how do you understand kind of your responsibility to your subjects? Um, you know, be it the photography itself, but specifically in this documentary, especially because the types of spaces that you all were in, they often don't have a voice. And so it's really important how you manage that. So I would love to know how you approach that, but also if there's like a higher level of responsibility with these particular uh, subjects. Um, you know, I guess uh, in lots of places we had to kind of plan uh, uh, the, to document it even if we knew that it was not sure that it would happen you know you take the project at the border in mexico we try to get film crew there we try to get news but we couldn't confirm that it would exactly happen we were just you know on our way there to try to make it happen so often um the the imagery comes from our crew because no one ha wants to take the risk to go and see if it happens you know they want to be sure they want to have a timing and so at the end, a lot of like young people that release videos online and stuff had actually came. And those are the, 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 the media that then spread to larger media after that, you know. So um, uh, we have a pretty organic way of working uh, with the team where we go in places and, you know, uh, involve the community, come in this very small team and work a lot with locals. If that answers your question. Thank you. Um, Dallas? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing we were cognizant of in the edit process was letting people speak for themselves, um, not trying to summarize what the experience was like for them or to guess what they were thinking or feeling, but let them either say it in their own words or let their face say it. Um, there were a lot of moments where you didn't need a lot of words to understand what was happening in that moment. And uh, and I think, I think that really came through in a lot of the footage, but I think these are conversations. I think JR says that really well. And a lot of a lot of these pieces are just meant to start a conversation. The conversation will then go for days, weeks, years. Um, and that's the beauty of it, is that it's not it's not a piece that you own and there's an answer of what it's about, and then we leave. It's 
it's to get these conversations started. And so I think I think the work has succeeded in doing that all over the world. Mark. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these all these art installations are are converse, conversation starters, and that's what they are. They don't intend to uh, impose any message on anyone. They just uh, are a bridge for people to express uh, their feelings and and approach a problem in a, in a visual and very different way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, JR never tells people what they should think, or it never imposes a message. He just lets the art speak for itself, and and people make their own mind and then speak with each other. Yeah, yeah. And Keiko, the same question, but specifically thinking about how much kind of uh, film you probably had to go through to piece together for the documentary. How did you approach um, what information and, and scenes you kind of brought in um, to, to make sure that you were still being respectful to the subjects, but getting that story out there? I, um, I mean, we had so much, uh, we could we could have gone so much more deep, you know, deeper into each characters, and that's something I, you know, sometimes I wonder what the film might have been. Although this film, I think we wanted to get the bigger picture, like all these different project combined, uh, what uh, what it's doing, and uh, I think we have just enough to feel enough um, because I for me the what I felt through the footage watching all those footage and then for me to convey the feeling that I get uh, with a minimum amount of you know uh, time we could spend uh, that's the uh, the challenge and I was I, I hope we can you know we did that somehow well, I, I think you did. Um, <laughs> really, really great film to watch. Um, my next question kind of picks up on um, uh, two things that Dallas and uh, Mark said, um, and would love to hear from all of you on this. And I guess we can start with you, JR. Uh, you said that the art uh, starts conversations, um, you know, not taking a stance, not telling people how, how to think. But I guess there is some decision on, you know, what conversations you choose to start. So, you know, why have you chosen to start these conversations, even if you're not telling people how they should feel about it? Why do you want people to feel anything about it? Well, all those places, if you think about it, one is happening in front of my house. So in France, you know, in the project, that's a conversation that of course, you kind of, you know, all everyone heard around the world, even if, you know, it happened in France, that was very largely mediated at the time. Uh, then when you take Mexico, um, or the project in Brazil, you actually uh, see that those are issues that we get here about every day on the media. You know, Brazil uh, at that moment that it was all over the news because of the, the those uh, three kids being you know killed by the police. But um, uh, the wall was you know being mentioned on television every day, uh, you know by uh, uh, you know the ex president, and so you, you would hear about this constantly. And so I, you know, those are often places where I'm like, well, let me go and see by myself, you know, let me go and, and, and actually see what's going on there. So that's often how it starts. Uh, and then, you know, the connection with the people happens and then the, the, it's very organic the way the project then, you know, come together. Um, and the prison one is something that, um, you know, it's kind of, it defines well also how projects happen with our, you know, with, with no plans, you know, it's really hard to work in prison. It's really hard to get any permits. Uh, you can't bring your phone in there and, and use, uh, you know, the, uh, like you can't share videos from there live and all this kind of thing. And suddenly the governor of California happened to be in an old mural of mine before he was a governor. So he said, well, if this artist wants to come, I'll give him the full clearance. And wow. so suddenly I have a full clearance to go in any prison in California and I just look on Google Earth and I say, oh, this one, because it was in concrete. And then they say, oh, this is on the maximum security. And I was like, well, you know, this is the only one I could paste on. And so we went in and that's how the project started. But it's really the randomness of th this governor who happened to be in the mural years before and who remembered the process of interviewing stories and, and people and having histories like as part of searching other hundred people. Uh, so, you know, often, um, it's kind of how life 
happens, you know, with total, uh, you know, coincidence and uh, and then luck also. Um, I want to pose the same question to the rest of you, but um, and we can start with you, Keiko. Just specifically thinking about the documentary and how the film um, how the film came together. What do you hope? Not that people are talking about, but uh, sorry, let me get this question right. Uh, as you all were putting the film together, you know, how do you hope these conversations kind of happen in the public or in private um, as people consume it? Like, what do you want people to be talking about after they watch this film? Um, I often don't think about those things, so <laughs> it's hard to come come up with an answer for that. But I, I mean, I, I. I'm gonna go back to the same thing that I went back. I said it before. Um, just the feeling I get watching all these people, like how they felt, uh, oops, um, how how they felt about this, um, like JR coming into their place and trying to put the you know shine the light on those you know these people, and what does that means to them. Uh, I could really feel within the footage. And uh, so people to actually think, oh, really uh, what, you know, what that it really means to be uh, seen, uh, the, you know, the small things, but what it means. And it's such a huge thing for these people. Uh, I hope this, you know, conversation starts there. Thank you. Dallas? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up also on one thing that JR said. We were having a conversation at one point about being an artist and what it meant. And, and you said, I never want to have a job where I have to keep a calendar and I have to live by that calendar. And of course, as a producer, I live by the calendar and I'm a slave to the calendar sometimes. But it stuck with me because it it is your innate gift, is that you're free to to go where the stories take you and to get a phone call on a Tuesday and be on a plane in six hours because there's something important there that you need to see or that you are intrigued by or you know there's a there's an opportunity to do a work there and I think that's a really special gift that a lot of us can dream about having <laughs> don't have perhaps we we can take a page out of that book and learn to be a little more free-spirited and go where go where the stories take us because yeah. I think that's so important. But in terms of the messages for the films, um, I, I mean, I think optimism and withholding judgment were the things that really I learned so deeply in making this. Uh, first of all, I think JR is, is an optimist and sees the best in everybody and sees opportunities where a lot of people to see walls or, or barriers or problems. And I think it's, it's such a great way for all of us to remember that we don't have to um, constantly look for the negative, but there's, there's a lot to be gained for everybody if you, if you flip things around and you find the optimistic moment there. And similarly, withholding judgment, I mean, we all, we all give a lot of lip service to that, but it's hard when you walk into a room and you see people with tattoos that scare you or offend you to not have a judgment immediately in your head and, and to learn to, to put the judgment aside is so powerful because it, it is the opening of the conversation. Then you can have really meaningful conversations. Yeah. But if you've got the wall of judgment, then nothing, you don't, you're not sharing. Yeah, absolutely. And you all did a wonderful job just humanizing uh, everyone in the film. Mark, did you have anything you wanted to add? I mean, JR's art is about showing that the limits are always further than you think. And if, you know, uh, people who watch the film get a little bit of that and then, you know, have little changes in the way they, they see things uh, and they see the world, that's, that's what we can um, of hope for, but we're not trying to impose change on anyone, just uh, just showing that art with little, uh, uh, with, with small art project can, or I mean, on a monumental scale sometimes, but can, can really change uh, the way anyone can see things. Yeah. Um, okay, this is my last question, um, and it will be for all of you. We can start with uh, JR, um, but right now, you know, I mean, over the past year and a half, COVID has been happening. The world is just kind of in a really tough spot right now. 
Um, you know, COVID is still raging. We have a climate crisis. Uh, you know, there's still racial unrest, uh, poverty, just a lot of things. And so I just wonder during such a difficult time, and, you know, you talk about this a lot, like finding the bright spots. For those of us who are not artists ourselves, how can we share art with others so that people, you know, like the people in this film can, can be hopeful about the things that are around us despite everything that's going on? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, you know, being an artist is working with constraints. And like you said, during COVID, uh, you couldn't travel. So my constraint for me in my case was like, like most of the people around the world is you could only things, you could only do things around you. And so I started working in my neighborhood in Paris or like in the, you know, uh, all around Paris uh, area uh, to distribute meals and engage people on social media if they wanted to join and help. So then they turn this whole system into something that's 200 percent social only and so and take out the art out of it and and it was as engaging for people because suddenly we all felt we had you know something we could do instead of just sitting at home and so um i think that you know any everybody can do something we uh, we, we've made also art accessible to the inside that project so whoever sends us their portraits we will print them and ship them for free wherever they are to try to push and engage more communities to get together and and celebrate you know uh, uh, a message what they stand for and we do a lot of those projects as we're speaking now in new york uh, there is a huge pacing happening which is one of the biggest one we've done so far uh, with people uh, stopping by a photo booth truck and uh, and participating to this giant pasting but there are some happening around the world so there are lots of ways but there's uh, ways to do it within the art context or without, you know, uh, just by doing and, and, and trying to help people that are around you in your surrounding and that's possible during COVID. Alice? Yeah, I mean, I think the emphasis on this film was a lot about process and about people and process. I mean, the art obviously is amazing and beautiful and profound, but what the film focuses on is, is the people behind it and the process of making it. And I think there's a process of making anything. There's a process of making dinner, a process of, of walking down the street and you know, kind of being aware of what you're putting out there and what you're receiving and how you're interacting with people. And so I think you don't have to, um, you don't have to be an amazing artist to affect the world around you. Certainly it's wonderful that there are, but um, but we all can, you know, we all can be part of these conversations and we all can can be conversation starters in our own way. Absolutely. Keiko? Um, I don't know if this is gonna be answering your question, but the COVID, what it took away, as JR says in the film, is really the connection with the people. Um, and for me, the little bit of opening of COVID really what I'm embracing is going to museums and going to see movies uh, because that's what I miss the most. And I think, you know, the arts really does that to bring people together. And uh, I think that's, you know, I think the, this, this film also tells that kind of, you know, that bringing people together story. So, um, yeah, that's what uh, I feel about this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think the closing uh, kind of scenes that talk about who's able to access museums and monuments um, and why you're able to, how you're able to bring that art to, to those folks who aren't always able to do that is definitely kind of a way. Uh, Mark, if you want to close with that. Exactly. Art, art is about bringing people together. And I hope this film will also uh, bring people together towards the end and then talk about it. Yeah, thank you. Well, I guess that's an answer to the question too. You can watch this documentary. Um, but thank you so much to all of you, to JR, Dallas, Keiko, and Mark for joining us today for this conversation. And I hope all of our audience enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.